Hi, I'm Kaylee, a librarian here at Mentor Public Library. And I'm Meg, also a librarian. And welcome to this week's edition of All Booked Up with Kaylee and Meg, where each time we give you different book recommendations on a specific theme. Today, we're going to be looking at teen tearjerkers. So in the past, we've looked at adult tearjerkers, but we figured there's so many uh, uh, young adult books to choose from that will also get you crying that we had to cover it today. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, I think that there's been a lot of popularity in these like sad books for teens, uh, you know, The Fault in Our Stars, <laughs> which is not what we're talking about today, but a lot of these have been super popular, made into movies and things. And so hopefully we have a few new ones to make you cry today that <laughs> you haven't heard of yet, because yes. uh, everyone loves a good cry once in a while. So all of the books that we're going to talk about today are available for you through the library, as well as online with your library card through Hoopla and Libby. Okay, Meg, what's the first book to make me cry? So the first one to make you cry is a fairly recent book that came out this past November called You've Reached Sam by Dustin Tao. And this one uh, is a classic tearjerker. I, I think my prediction is it's definitely going to be a Netflix movie someday or something like that. Oh. Some adaptation. Um, it's about 17 year old Julie Clark and she has her whole future planned ahead of her. She already has the college she wants to attend and she's planning to go there with her boyfriend. And then after that, her job and all their future together. So it's all perfectly planned. But of course, because this is a tearjerker, things don't go to plan. Very sadly, her boyfriend, Sam, dies um, right before they're about to graduate. So Julie is obviously grieving. She's going through a lot of pain in the beginning of this book. And one of her ways of coping is to try and hear Sam's voice again. And the way she goes about doing that is she just calls his number on her cell phone because she wants to hear his voice and his voicemail, you know, answering machine uh, message. And what's cool in this book is when she does that, something very strange happens. When she calls the number, Sam answers. So she actually hears Sam's voice and it's not his message. It's actually him talking to her. So she can actually supernaturally have these very short conversations with Sam and these go on for months. And so it's, it's kind of an interesting element to the book. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Jack Frost, mm -hmm. uh, where Michael Keaton, you know, he dies and then comes back as a snowman to talk to his son. Boiler it, alert, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> well, he dies in the first five minutes, so I figured it's not that big as fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, I can see what you mean. <laughs> reminds me of that. And you know, that's just going to get you crying right away. And I like how the book, even though it has that kind of supernatural element, it does deal with a lot of down to earth, you know, just like what grieving is like, um, just part of Julie's uh, emotions that she's going through, some of the anxiety she has just in her day to day life as well. So and how she talks to Sam about that. So it's a very unique take on a tearjerker, you know, with the few unique elements to it. So that's why I like it. Yeah. I mean, it sounds very good. And, you know, I think I've seen another movie where it's like they call and the person can talk to them from beyond the grave, but okay, yeah. it is a cool idea too. So, uh, so my next book also has a little bit of uh, supernatural elements and sort of reminds me a few about a little bit about the one you just talked about. Uh, this one's called early departures by Justin A. Reynolds. And this is about Jamal. Jamal and Quincy were best friends until they had a falling out. And now it's been two years since they've really talked. They barely speak to each other. But Quincy, also known as Q, drowns, trying to save someone else. And Jamal is just filled with guilt and regret that he never made things right between the two of them. And he didn't do more to, you know, mend the relationship with his best friend, get over things, forgive him, that kind of thing. But turns out he may have a second chance after all, because Q's mother opts for Q to be taken to the center, uh, mm -hmm. where his body can be reanimated for a short period. 
giving Jamal and other loved ones a chance to say goodbye before he ultimately dies again, a more final death, if you will. And it would give Jamal a chance to make amends with Q. But Q's mother does not want anyone to tell him about his death or his upcoming death. (laughs) Uh, And this is really hard because Hugh doesn't remember that last day. And Mm -hmm. so he doesn't remember the things leading up to it. He does not remember that day that Jamal tried to save him when he was drowning. And Jamal trying to make amends is having a really hard time trying to explain why he wants to make amends to Q in order to do so without spilling the truth. And Jamal and several other loved ones and friends are trying to make Q's last days, which they're not 100% certain how long they are, be the best of his life, his death. I don't know the right terminology for that point, uh, but it's very difficult. And Jamal himself has already dealt with a lot of loss in his life. Both of his parents passed away a couple of years ago, and that's a large reason for the falling out the two boys had. But he can't explain himself to Q in order to tell him what's going on. And, you know, this, the book is really a lot of sad because obviously he passes away right at the beginning there. But it definitely has some uplifting points. And like you said about your previous book, I think it has a lot to do really about the grieving process and, you know, what you would say to someone what you would do if you had a chance knowing that they're leaving, but Mm -hmm. also how to move forward after you've lost that person. Mm -hmm. And Jamal has experienced a lot of loss in his life. And he has to sort of come to terms with the fact that even though he's experienced a lot of loss, he still has a lot to live for himself. Mm -hmm. And he still has a lot of people in his life who love him and will support him and help him move forward. Mm -hmm without his parents and without Q in the future. Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting take on the grieving process, I think. Yeah, yeah, it sounds really, yeah, touching and also reminds me almost a little science fiction-y, like 50 years from now, you know, would that be some sort of a thing that could somehow happen, you know, like Mm -hmm. just like, you know, funny things like that, but. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I've, I mean, we've seen those uh, zombie yeah. movies that started with people reanimated loved ones. This doesn't <laughs> turn that way. Not quite like <laughs> that, but yeah. So, so yeah, that is, that's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my next one uh, takes place in Hawaii and it's called Summer Bird Blue. So I know it's, we're in March right now, but you know, you get your little <laughs> summer reads starting early. <laughs> um, and it's by Akemi Don Bauman. And this is about two sisters and their shared love of music. And then, you know, the sad part that happens. Um, <laughs> so our main character is Rumi Sato. And her big passion is the music that she makes with her sister, Leah. And that that's just like, what she wants to do in her life is make new music with her sister. Well, her sister dies in a car crash. Yeah, I know. And both Rumi and obviously their mother obviously are grieving very heavily, but her mother uh, is grieving in such a way that she actually sends Rumi to live with her aunt in Hawaii. So when Rumi arrives in Hawaii, she's kind of dealing with three losses, so to speak, the loss of her sister, obviously. Then also she feels abandoned by her mother in a way, like they're grieving and her mother's kind of shutting her out by making her go live with her aunt. And then also kind of her loss of music, like the joy she used to have in music is kind of gone now too with her sister. So she's kind of dealing with a whole bunch of pain and loss at the beginning of this book. And um, so when she arrives in Hawaii, she meets these two uh, men, one young and one old, who kind of help her in different ways. So there's a young teenager, Kai, who is a surfer, and he's kind of a 
carefree, happy-go-lucky guy, always smiling and doesn't seem to care about important things in her eye, you know, because she's dealing with all these heavy issues and he's just like a free, a free bird. So that's the first uh, guy. And then she meets an 80 year old man um, named George Wananabe. And he, um, as you find out, he has his own grief that he has dealt with in the past. So they have another different type of relationship that's very touching, you know, in the context of what she has gone through as well. So it's about those relationships, also about her rediscovering her purpose, you know, loving her love of music and kind of getting that back. And I also like the Hawaii backdrop. I know <laughs> it's a beautiful location, but it's like the beautiful location combined with all, you know, the pain and kind of maybe dreary, you know, type mm -hmm. of things that she's dealing with. So, so I, I, I like that one as well, especially to read, you know, I, are we going to get snow or some cold soon? I'm going to read a <laughs> summer book. <laughs> I agree with that. No, that sounds really interesting. And I think that's one of those, um, stories too that I, we hear about here and there where it's like uh taking you completely out of the situation can help you yeah. heal mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely uh the next one i have is not really quite as sad as the ones we've talked about so far this is called instructions for dancing by nicola yoon uh mm -hmm. and you might know the name she wrote a couple yeah. other big ones um yeah. the sun is also a star and everything everything yeah. Also sort of tear jerky, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so this is about Evie. And Evie was always a lover of love. Uh, mm -hmm. She was obsessed with romance novels and believed wholeheartedly in happily ever afters. Uh, <laughs> that is until her father cheated on her mother and then left her for another woman. And at this point, Evie is just convinced that all love ends in heartbreak and she does not even want to look into it herself. So she gathers up all of her romance novels because she's going to donate them because obviously they're all lies. Yes. And <laughs> she goes to do so and the old woman manning um, the book donations insists that Evie take this other book in return, Instructions for Dancing. So after taking this book, something weird starts to happen with Evie. She starts seeing people's relationships. She sees a kissing couple and their entire relationship flashes before her eyes. The wow. beginning, the middle, and the ugly breakup. Ooh. And everyone she sees like this, in every couple in love, she sees their ending. And it wow. is just really a lot to carry around with you because uh, yeah. one of the first people she sees is your sister. She doesn't want to tell her sister that she's going to end an ugly breakup with the man she says is the love of her life. Oh, no. <laughs> and so this keeps happening and every couple she sees who's madly in love, she sees the end for them. And so she's trying to rid herself of this weird curse that she's now taken on and she <laughs> dives into this dance book. Um, and she finds that a local address is listed at the back for a dance studio. And before she knows it, Evie finds herself signed up for dance classes and signed up for a local dance competition Ooh. with X, Xavier X, oh. Uh, oh. the gorgeous, charming grandson of the studio's owner. And despite... Evie's ban on all things love, she is drawn to X. Like I said, he's gorgeous, he's charming, and you know, she's in close quarters with him a lot because they're dancing together. But she's still surrounded by other people's heartbreak constantly, and you know, has to try to decide if she's really willing to risk it, risk her own heartbreak. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this might sound not super tearjerker e, uh, but it really does have its moments. Evie is really dealing with a lot in her life. And it, you know, then she's bogged down with this emotional baggage of other people that she can't really share with them. Yeah. And, it, you know, she's also just sort of struggling with the realization that her parents aren't perfect. And I think that's, 
one of those things that comes about in books like of this age a lot where yeah. it can really sort of destroy your worldview yeah. when the actions of those people very close to you you realize that they make mistakes too and that sometimes right. their intentions are not as pure as you would hope and it, so it's a lot of love and loss and sort of just realizing the world is not a fairy tale yeah. uh, and how to pick up the pieces after your heart's been broken in mm -hmm. one way or another yeah yeah, absolutely. And, and kudos to you. I mean, I know some people, you might want a tearjerker, but maybe not the death of a loved one type of tearjerker, <laughs> which are all the other ones before. So this is a yeah. nice change of pace because there's a lot of things to, to cry over. I mean, there, it so. definitely hits you in the feels. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that sounds like a great choice. Uh, I also love the dancing theme too. You know, <laughs> It's really always, cute. It is really cute. So, you know, a cute tearjerker. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys for joining us for this week's edition of All Booked Up with Kaylee and Meg. We hope you were pulled in by maybe the cathartic allure of tearjerkers. So maybe yeah. you will read one of these. <laughs> yes. And a happy reading. <laughs>